Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna do a boost FPS guide for No Man's Sky. I think my previous guide was like three years ago, something like that. A lot changed in the game if we're talking about optimization and even content. And also a lot change with Windows. So uh, we're gonna start like the optimization of Windows and after that we will inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're gonna search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is, sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have four gig of RAM, eight gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32, just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, we're going to go to video option. First of all, window mode. Make sure that you're playing full screen. All the other modes is causing like stuttering. So I'm not a huge fan of it. Resolution, I recommend to go with native. So play native uh, depending on your monitor. So if you have a 2K monitor, go 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. 
Resolution scaling, I recommend to play at 100 if you want to touch the scaling to have more FPS. I recommend to use the image scaler from Nvidia or Radian or use Fidelity FX uh, that I will show you at the end of the guide. For VSync, uh, I'm, I'm using off because I have a FreeSync monitor. So if you have FreeSync or G-Sync, don't use the VSync. If you don't have those technology and you don't like your T-Ring when you're playing the game, uh, go with on. Max FPS, I'm locking my FPS at 167 because I have a 170 Hertz monitor. I want to stay in my free sync range. Uh, I don't recommend to uh, just put your um, FPS at unlimited. It will cause a lot of issue for your thermals. So for example, if you have like a 60 Hertz screen, just lock your FPS at 60. HDR, I recommend to just take like use it if you have a proper HDR screen. If you don't have a proper monitor that try to emulate HDR, don't use it. Put this one at off. GPU, make sure that you're seeing your GPU. I know a lot of folks are uh, uh, have like an integrated GPU and also have a GPU. And sometimes on a laptop, it's causing like some issue. They're not using the proper one. So super important to see your GPU over there. After that, you have two type of field of view, the on foot and the flight. This one will uh, affect your FPS. So if you're going too high with this, you will lose a lot of FPS. So if you're struggling with this game and you have like you're trying to play, I don't know, on a, an integrated GPU on your CPU, put those one at 60 and it will help you for uh, to stabilize your FPS and also you will have a nice boost. Motion blur, I don't recommend to use that. So put this one at zero and vignette and scan line disable. After that. Graphic parameter. The first one is the texture and they give you a, a nice table over there. So it really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have on your video card. So if you have 8 gig or more, go with Ultra. I 6 gig, Enhance 4 gig, Standard 2 gig. For animation quality, honestly, a lot of people can run Enhance. It's not too uh, shabby if you compare uh, to uh, Standard, like 1 or 2% difference. For sure, if you're playing on a CPU with 2 cores and 2 threads, just go with standard, but you can definitely go and ends. Shadow quality, this one is really important. If I compare standard to ultra, you can expect a nice 16% boost in your FPS. So that's a lot. Um, after that, post-processing, I recommend also standard. You can expect a nice 9% boost in your FPS, but also uh, a better visual quality and clarity uh, with uh, the post-processing at standard. So that's why I recommend this. Reflection, if I compare Ultra to Standard, you can expect 7% boost in your FPS, but the most important is to stabilize your FPS when you have a lot of reflection in this game. I was getting some crazy drop, like 30, 40 FPS, so that's why I'm going with Standard. Volumetric effect is pretty much on par with the Shadow. Uh, if I compare Ultra to Standard, you can expect a nice 16% boost in your FPS, so that's why I'm going with Standard. Terrain Tessellation, a lot of people can just run I if you have like a decent video card, it will work even if it's old like 4 years or 5 years ago. If you have very old Radeon card like uh, R9 290X or 280X, don't go too crazy with the Tessellation, they're struggling with that, so put this one at standard. Planet Quality will affect your draw distance so uh if you don't like standard you can definitely go to an end but you have four percent difference for each bracket so again a huge impact on your fps really depending on what you want uh, if you have like a better experience i recommend an end base complex complexity sorry i recommend to go with low and with this setting you can expect six percent boost in your fps after that you have anisotropic filtering so for this one, I just, just follow the texture quality. If you're using Ultra, go with 16. If you're using I, 8, 8 4, and ends and 2 for standard. For the ambient inclusion, I recommend to put this one at off. Uh, you can expect a nice 8% boost in your FPS also. If you, th you think that your uh, game looks too flat, go with standard. It will help. Uh, with, uh, ambient inclusion will add like a better um, visual so uh, go with standard if you don't you can't play at off for anti-aliasing for sure you can get more fps to, when you're removing it but i don't recommend it you're seeing a lot of aliasing in this game so just use fx a8 a basic uh, anti-aliasing i recommend to use the fidelity fx super resolution 1.0 also if you uh, you can't use that uh, go with quality or ultra quality and if you're struggling like crazy with your FPS, you can definitely use balance or performance, but you will see a big decrease in your image quality.
So this is pretty much it for my No Man's Sky guide, guys. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. Also, I have a Discord that we're doing support over there. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.